Hey everybody, welcome back to Final Thoughts for Middle Earth Quest, which is very far away. Let me walk all the way over here to get to it. Okie doke. Oh, oh my goodness. Hi, okay. I cannot tell you how exhausting that was. And I think I only made it through two rounds. Um, the, the game, I think, generally goes for what? Nine, two, four, six, eight, or wait, I know. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, strictly speaking, at the speed that this little green um, Tree of Gondor symbol moves for the heroes, you basically get nine rounds before they're going to hit the finale. Although, there are ways that Sauron can slow that down, so, you know, you know anything's possible. But, Boy, this game is long. I mean, this game is so... I mean, it, you know, I guess it's appropriate, thematically, that it is so long. Because it is such a big, epic subject matter, and, you know, and, and the universe it comes from. But, I mean, you know, the box says... I don't know, what does the box say? Uh, two to four players. Come on, tell me your... How long are you? Um, oh, it doesn't even want to tell me how long it takes. I cannot see anywhere that it says... Are you trying to keep it a secret, Fantasy Flight? Oh, no, 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 right here. Three to four hours. Okay. In our experience, more like four to five. Now, admittedly, we are very slow players. I mean, we are super slow. Slowest players on Earth. Well, Jen is. I'm pretty quick, but Jen is slow enough for both of us. But yeah, I mean, in our experience, I mean, this is an all-day game. We set this up in the morning, and we're finishing it up around four or five o'clock in the evening. And... That is a problem for us, in all honesty. I mean, we never, I mean, we, and, you know, that alone, right there, means we play this game maybe once or twice a year at most, because we just, you know, we just can't make that much time. For, I mean, if we're going to spend that much time, we should play two or three or four games, really, not just one. So, I mean, you know, every once in a while we play it, and while that time is going on, I mean, you know, it, it definitely, you're wrapped up. I mean, you, you, the time does fly, literally, as you're playing, because it is a fun game. I should start with that. This is a very fun game. We actually like it quite a bit. We don't love it though, and you know, I'll talk about why. I mean, okay, well the things we like, or like slash love. Absolutely love the combat system in this game. Amazing, so smart. Um, you know, the, you know the, the notion of the bluffing and trying to figure out what your opponent is gonna do and using card combinations and no dice rolling. This is pure, in, you know, matching intellect. Um, you know, you know, you only have so much you can do before your character will run out of strength. Do you come in heavy with a thing? Do you go with like quick jabs and try? Do you do you set up combos where you know you're going to kind of force them to play a certain type of card on the next round, and then you set them up? Do you play to what is obvious, or do you know they're going to do that? So you you surprise them with you know unorthodox un moves. So much in the combat of this game. It's, it's I mean, you could you could strip away 90% of this game and still have a really cool game. I mean the, the the card combat in this game is, you know, top of the class. Um, so many games could learn from this game in terms of that. I absolutely, absolutely lovely. And the the travel for the heroes is great. You know, I mean, the fact that this is a deck builder is just amazing. Um, you know, the heroes are working on their decks, and every time they have to choose what card they're going to add, they have to offset the power it brings them in combat, because all those new cards are cool, versus the flexibility it gives them in moving around the world, because, you know, sometimes you desperately need that mountain, because you've got to go up into the mountains. And, you know, some characters are stronger at moving in some uh, areas than others, and that's all thematically tied and appropriate to the source material. Brilliantly done. And you know, the asymmetry of the game, too. Absolutely brilliant. Sauron is playing a completely different game than the heroes are playing. And yet, everything he does ties in so, so tightly to what the heroes are doing. Everybody's involved in the same game, even though they have such radically different agendas and ways to play. Absolutely brilliant. So, top, top notch work on the combat, on the travel, on the deck building, on the asymmetry. Absolutely love it. Um, you know, that you know, the, 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 the asymmetry from the Sauron, who is creating a game world for the heroes to play in. Just great. Stuff we don't like. The length. Man, I wish this game played in 90 minutes. I wish it was, you know, 90 minutes to 2 hours instead of 3 to 4. Because we played this game maybe once a month, if it, if it were that case. I mean, because it's so, so good. But, you know, the length is what it is. That's the choice they made. And so we don't like that. Uh, another couple things we don't like about it. Um, one, this game, in true Ameritrash style, is full of persnickety little rules that are very, very easy to forget in the heat of play. And now, you know, maybe to a certain extent that wouldn't be so much of a problem for us if we did, if we played this more than once or twice a year, and we'd start to remember all these dumb little rules about, um, you know, I mean, sometimes, you know, non-intuitive rules like 
when uh, Boromir has to be praised in the other place, he does it. He stays in the same place. Uh, don't forget that every time you rest, the you know Sauron moves up. Um, yeah, the. Uh, there's so many little things. Um, you know, you, you can't place influence in a haven, but you can move a character, uh, you know, a minion into a haven. But they can't attack without the player's permission. And um, uh, you know, you can you can rest in these places, but not in these places. And sometimes you draw these cards, sometimes you don't. Just a lot of persnickety rules. Very very easy to get caught up. Now that said, nowhere near as bad as say Arkham Horror, which is the poster child for modern Ameritrash games. Uh, you know, that game we don't like at all. We absolutely, well, despise is too strong a word, but we just have no interest in playing that game. It, there's no fun for us there at all. Whereas this game, the Ameritrashy elements, you know, the much more, the, the, the non-elegant, let's say, rules. All the dumb little persnickety, um, you know, gotcha rules. That's unfortunate. The length, unfortunate. Um, oh, and also the event cards. Um, well, the, the, these event cards and the what do you call them? The encounter cards. Those are an unfortunate addition to the game too. Or at least I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I'd put them overall in the in the in the bad category instead of the good. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. They're very cool and thematic. You know, and to a certain extent, they drive the game because this is where all the new favors keep coming in, and you know, and the heroes have to track down these favors or they can't beat Sauron. But and, you know, and some of them are really, really clever. Like that last one that hit me when I was Thalon. That notion of, you know, I'm just walking along, and boom, six points of damage. Boom, you just lost six points. Oh, but if you want to give up cards, if every card you give up, you can mitigate one point of damage. And if you give up six cards, you'll actually level up. Now, that one's still, I mean, I don't know. I have this thing about uh, Bolt of Lightning events in games, you know, co-op games or Ameritrash games, you know, the notion that, you know, they're, you know, they've got this beautiful system. Everything works together. It's all about players making choices and making plans and, and um, you know, and setting them in motion and then, you know, seeing them through and, and then games, you know, a lot of times, Arkham Horror being, you know, um, Robinson Crusoe did this too. And uh, this game does it a bit, but not as bad as the other ones, where it's just like, okay, everything's set up and now... Well, let's see what happens. Draw a card, read it, and oh, well, there's no way I could have anticipated that. And boom, I just lost half my forces. Or boom, I just got a huge boon. Um, you know, if I'd drawn this card, it was great for me. But if it had been this card, it would have been terrible for me. And you know, it just comes down to basically dumb luck. I just, I, 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 don't, I don't care for that. I mean, or, or to a certain, I should say, I don't care for it much. A little bit of it, a little bit of zing, a little bit of surprise, that's great. But this game, every turn, some big event is going to happen that radically changes. No, 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 that's an overstatement. In other games, every turn, you know, these big events can happen that just change everything or that, you know, you just roll, you, 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 pull, you pull a card and, oh, I just have to roll three dice. And if I get over 15, I win. And if I don't, I lose. And that's it. And that's the gameplay. That's not gameplay. That's, that's um, anyway, sorry. Um, I'm not going to slag. I'm not going to spend this whole time slagging off Arkham Horror. I know there's a lot of people who love it. I'm sure you have a great time. Um, it's all subjective. It, it's all just personal opinions. But a, you know that does rear, rear its ugly head here every once in a while. Where like you know somebody's really you know hurting. Sauron's really hurting. Or heroes are really hurting. And then they draw a card. And, oh, now you're hurting even more. And there's nothing you can do about it. There's a little bit of that here, but it's not too bad. It's not near as bad as other games I've seen. So to a certain extent, I'll kind of forgive it. But it is kind of unfortunate. I'm just really not a fan of that whole. Draw a card to see what lightning bolt hits you this time, and was it a good lightning bolt or a bad lightning bolt? A little bit of it's okay. It's a, you know, it's a staple of Ameritrash. You know, I much prefer it in games like, say, Pandemic, where yes, there are there is an event deck, and you draw them, and, and bad things happen. But you know what? Those bad things are tied into the systems that already exist. So that's a, and and like I said, there are several events that are actually really work really well that way. But yeah, well, it is what it is. It's a minor complaint. My bigger complaint is you know the game length and the little oh. And, now of course I didn't get a chance to demonstrate this, but by far the biggest complaint I have about this, you know, whenever Jay and I play this, we're definitely playing it all day. It's a four hour game easily. 50% of the time, after everything's said and done, we both played a really good game. It's been very competitive. It's been neck and neck, and both of us cross the finish line at the same time. That's not uncommon. And what that means is, um, or, or you know, another common thing, yeah, what, you know, Jen makes it first, makes it there first, but I was successful in preventing her from completing her secret objective because I figured out what it was and I was able to prevent her. Basically, unless somebody has completed their secret objective and, the, and they got to the end first or the other person didn't complete their secret objective, 
and you know, and you know, unless that perfect storm where they made it to the end first and they did what they needed to do, the game goes into basically a sudden death overtime, where the Nazgul fight a chosen hero that the heroes put forward, and you know they both get souped up, you know they both draw up. Whoever's in the lead, if there is a lead, if somebody's dominant, gets a few more cards, and then they just have a bog standard fight. The same type of fight you've had dozens and dozens and dozens of times throughout the whole game. The whole thing, this four hour epic struggle, conflict uh, game, is decided by just one fight that is not special or anything, it's just a regular fight. And that's, I gotta say, when that happens, that's very dispiriting. That's very disappointing. It's really. The climactic battle is incredibly anticlimactic. It almost feels like, well, let's just roll a die and see who wins this whole game then. Because, of course, you know, I mean, the, the, again, the combat is brilliant in this game. It is very skill-based. I mean, it is all about reading your opponent and guessing what they're going to do and throwing them for a loop. But it is also still based on luck of the draw. Which cards did you draw? And so that's a real shame when that happens. I would much rather that the finale rules get replaced with, oh yeah, you both crossed the finish line at the same time, or, or you both got your primary goal. Well, then pick something else. Some other scorekeeping mechanism that actually reflects how well I did over the course of the game. How many favors are still in the player's hand, or you know, if all the favors the player still has left over, um, you, you remove something from the shadow pool for every favor, and you know, if, there no, if there's no more shadows in the shadow pool, then you know, the heroes win. Something like that. Some kind of tiebreaker other than have a fight. Because that's a terrible, terrible tiebreaker, particularly because, at least in our experience, it happens quite a bit. It is not uncommon, I mean, which I guess means the game is actually fairly well balanced. It often comes down to this tiebreaker, but it's the worst tiebreaker ever. And now maybe we wouldn't mind it so much if this game lasted an hour. But this game lasts four hours. And so that's a real bummer. And you know, the persnickety rules are a bummer. And um, man, but I, I sound like I hate this game, but we don't. We're keeping it. We like it. We like it a lot. We love the idea. We can't do it very often. We just don't have the strength to sit down. But sometimes it is pretty cool to sit down and play a single game for an entire day. That's pretty neat. And, you know, and Jen loves the theme. I mean, she is a, a hardcore Tolkien fangirl. I mean, I like Tolkien, but she loves Tolkien. And, I mean, she tried reading The Silmarillion. I don't know if she succeeded or not, but she tried. And, uh, yeah. So, I don't know, I guess it's a bit of a mixed opinion. But on the whole, definitely think it's a keeper. Definitely. Just wish, just wish either they cut the game by 75% in length, or they fix the tiebreaker with something else, or they changed the balance so the tiebreaker wasn't quite so common. I guess those are really my only complaints about the game. So on the whole, I'd still say it's a keeper for us. Whether it is for you, well, that's up to you to decide. You've definitely seen this game played. You definitely have a good understanding of how this game feels. And hopefully you can make your own decision about whether Middle Earth is a game for you guys. And on that note, I will be bidding you adieu. Hope you have a lovely day doing whatever it is you're gonna do. And, um, the road goes ever on and on, over hill and, ah, I don't remember. It's been a long time. Uh, so, no talking quotes. Okay, just talk to you guys later. Have a good day. Bye-bye.